Well, 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 welcome back and wishing you a happy, a very happy, very restful, very relaxing Sunday morning over here from Helsinki, Finland. Another cold day, rainy, not snowy, but you know what, as always, wish you well. And today's very special day as we will be talking about long-term ideas as it is a good old Sunday. But first things first, let's get in the live scene and talk about the more immediate price action. Very little has been happening. Uh, let me just make sure that my feed is okay. Okay, yes, you can see the price is good. God, great. Wait, what? <laughs> that made no sense. Anyways, uh, yeah, Bitcoin lower time frames just can in this area doing absolutely nothing during the beginning of the weekend sorry just over the weekend hours uh, essentially all of the actions going down in the lower time frames which is just about nothing just essentially what what we have going on right now is a flag now this flag while typically is a bullish continuation pattern i do believe that we actually probably head down a little bit first um and tap the lower end of the 3500 range, whether it's, you know, 35, 35, 10, 35, 30, 35, 40, whatever the fuck it might be. Uh, I am sort of looking for price action to, to fall back down around this region. I, I suppose this is actually 3550 right over here, although I do think that it gets a little bit lower just based off the daily 21. So again, when you do have a nice, big, massive, girthy green dildo like this, it tends the, or sorry, it tends to, and it is the traditional classic play to, uh, to, to buy the retest of the yellow 21 exponential on the nest pass and you know I, I i will buy it myself without stuttering hopefully as well but i will buy it um just because well it's a trade and it's one of those it's one of those ones that works out more often than it that, it, that uh, then it does not now does this mean that i'm bullish does this mean that i believe that the, that the ultimate lows are in no absolutely not at all and we're going to go into very very deep detail later on in this video uh as it is a long-term analysis video but when i look at this uh, when I look at this, uh, uh, when I look at this chart, I see a clear rejection of the green to five exponential. And once you reject that, you know, where's where, uh, where are we looking to test? Well, probably down around this range. Again, if, uh, we really don't need to put in any sort of uh, sophisticated technical analysis tools to get this one, um, to, to get this one more or less right. I mean, we have an, a very obvious, uh, uh, horizontal support trend line right over here, which Bitcoin broke out of. Now, of course, I was saying that anything above 3469 was probably going to be, you know, a nice big breakout. Obviously the more official area was this area right here, but I would like to see Bitcoin pop back down and test this area as it typically does confirm it as support. And then probably, you know, try again, higher grind the area a little bit higher. And, uh, and we'll talk about, you know, what that could look like but as long as bitcoin is above this area yes i will have that short term that short term bias of Pro, of, of looking for this to be bought up um, at least on the first pass now if it comes back down here two times that's when things get a little bit more hairy and uh not like potter but <laughs> the goddamn little wizard um but uh, if if that were to happen, then yes, it's it, it becomes a lot it becomes a lot less certain. It becomes more of a sell than anything. And if and of course, if it does break this area, you're going to likely have this a similar reaction to what you had on the way up. Except it's going to be the opposite, equal but opposite direction on the way down. So again, you know, keep these things in mind. As far as as far as what we're doing right now in the lower time frames, you know, this is just a flag. But like I said, I do believe that it starts to turn down. We do have our lower time frame also is turning down. We got a four hour snake and snaking down right now we got a two hour still headed down never crossed up um over the weekend yeah same thing with the three hour giving you a small snake and then down what about the six hour six hour giving you a fresh cross down or hinting at one that's going to be confirmed if it ends here or lower in the next four hours and 58 minutes that's that's a long time i mean a lot of things can happen but it does look to me like things do want to you know take a little bit of a step down um and i believe that we are all the way down up until the eight hour yeah eight hours not necessarily down just yet but uh gonna lose its nice little consolidation pattern if it ticks down just a few more bucks and takes out that prior low um, and then at that point yeah I'd, I'd really be looking somewhere I suppose it's actually more like 35 30 35 40 something like that um, but keep in mind you know Bitcoin hitting a major resistance in this area in fact perhaps that could have even been the top which I do say lightly but this this trend line has been governing on our lower highs now this trend line uh, born from this symmetrical triangle that Bitcoin uh, put in at the end of December early January which is still very much in play I don't I don't see too much too many people talking about this but as long as Bitcoin is below the breakdown point I am actually still looking for this to get hit and the breakdown point is 3850 and the measure move off this guy whoops wrong tool there we go uh, the measure move off this guy is all the way down here at around 32 uh, 3250 3200 ish area you know down, uh, down around in, the, in, in this area so as long as bitcoin is is essentially below that 3850 ish area yeah that is certainly on the table and i would be looking for this pattern to likely play out 
um, again, a descending triangle is what we are currently in the midst of right now, or for, or perhaps, it, or perhaps actually what I am now considering and what I and what I believe is is now the right way to be representing this as is not necessarily as a descending triangle, but actually as some sort of a pennant, some sort of a pennant, which is you know, I mean, this is really just splitting hairs, you know, putting your finger up and saying, Nicholas Merton's here, okay, and I have been reading Investopedia, and that's not a goddamn descending triangle. It's a pennant. It's like, okay, yeah, I, I get it. They're not exactly parallel. Um, just having arguments with, with myself like a fucking schizophrenic maniac. But <laughs> my point is that, you know, it, as far as patterns go, I don't care what name you put on them. I care about how you respond and react around uh, resist, support and resistance. And this is what I'd be looking at over here. The reason why I am now, uh, why I'm now putting a, uh, a rising trend line here is because on the higher time frames, we actually do have what what uh, what is confirmed to me as a uh, as, as a short term reversal, not a full reversal. You know, back on a new all time highs or anything like that. I have to be very very careful with the way that I relate these ideas because it's very easy to be misheard on the internet. And I have to you know, and maybe and that's in part due to just my imperfectness of of communication, but also it's just you know it's a fucking internet, so you can't really worry about that too much, I suppose. But uh, but but after a green deal like this on decent volume, but again, decent volume is not is not change up volume, right? It's not change up volume. We still get that nice orderly drop off in volume going from left to right. We're still just, you know, taking another one in the in the overall consolidation period. But that does tell me that this is a pivot point to be working off of. So with that in mind, we can probably do something like this. In fact, if you do it on daily, it's gonna be a little bit different. But you know the 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 uh, the overall idea still stands. So that's what I'd be looking at over here, and we actually would have an apex at the beginning of March, which would make a lot more sense to me given the overall matureness of this pattern as it stands. You see the volume catchers on this, and they are getting pretty damn light. And when it gets to down to a small pitter patter, that's typically when you do get major breakouts or breakdowns. Now, of course, with a formation like this, I'd be you know taking the bear side of this. Of course, when you have a when you when you're in a bear market more often than not i'm gonna go with the bearish side as it's been winning for over a year lower highs and lower lows not so fucking bullish now is it uh anyway anyways uh we not only have this guy suggesting that a major move is 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 likely in the making but if we do go over to perhaps an eight hour and to put on the historical volatility rank we can get a good read for for what is you know what constitutes what constitutes when a major um, a major move is likely to happen? So when you see that move that we had um, on uh, the on Friday, February the eighth, yeah, it was nice and it does does kind of spike up once again. But you actually can fit a nice, beautiful trend line right around this area right here, and that tells me that again, this is just consolidation. This is just to be considered a consolidation, as far as I'm concerned. When the eight hour volatility rank historic, historical volatility rank gets down around to this point one this not point one region which it did for a second but you know not really taking off and not having continuation is not the best sign right now uh that's when big moves do happen so this to me just looks like another spike in the overall consolidation phase that we're playing out right now again granted the volume characters characters themselves uh in in confluence with the with the volatility uh with the with the historical volatility rank yeah it does look more and more like this is just to be considered you know a part of the whole one piece of the whole not necessarily a breakout which I think is what most people uh, hope and wish for um, and again I want to be bullish as well I love titties and I will be buying Elsa a brand new pair of titties at 20,000 Bitcoin $20,000 per Bitcoin of course that'll be proof of titties day however <laughs> however Got to call a spade a spade in the meantime, and and with doing this as a living as an actual trader, someone who who quite literally does this, you know, does this as a profession, you gotta, you know, you can't you can't force your opinion on the market, right? Uh, I'm I'm all for bull market as well. I'm all for titties as well, but. I'm all for not living on the streets as well either, <laughs> either you know. Um, so again, uh, Bitcoin really hasn't changed anything from the overall picture, and that is that's really the best way to sum up the lower time frames. Until Bitcoin breaks this area here at 3730, uh, 3750, if Bitcoin can close like a two hour dildo above this area, it will start to change the lower time frames. If Bitcoin can break 3720, 3730, there ain't nothing stopping it from 4000, and it will likely be another very quick move. 
a very quick, uh, just like what you saw over here. It's probably going to be very similar to that. Now, do I think that happens? I don't really have a strong opinion. Um, I would say I, I, I think it's I think it's less likely to happen. Uh, again, when you're in an overall bear market, I'm always going to go with the trend. I'm always going to go with the trend because the trend is your friend until the end of the trend. And the trend, well, even if it did get to four thousand, would it would it reverse the whole trend? No, not even up to a daily actually. As on a daily, well, <laughs> you got to get you actually got to get back above. Well, if, if you could close if you could close above about 40, 50, 40, 100, that would start to change some things. Now you'd have a higher high on the daily, and things would look a little bit different. But as it stands right now, uh, yesterday's consolidationary ish type dildo like this, I do not like. And the reason why I do not like it is because when you do see a nice momentous move like this, you want to see it followed up relatively quickly, or you want to see it. T uh, tap back down to Tesla support and confirm it as support. When it hangs right here, like right after that, it typically incites the wrong things. Now, this is very nitpicky, and this is something that you're never going to find in technical analysis book or anything like that. It's just something that I've noticed in my own experience, especially with trading cryptos. Um, you want to see on, on a major breakout or breakdown, you want to see uh, follow through pretty much on you know as soon as possible the longer that you wait the worse that it gets um again when you do put in an, in an area like this if we do start confirming this as i mean if we do actually turn down and confirm this as a lower high it's just going to be another lower high and the problem with this <laughs> fucking duh sorry the problem with this is because now you're going to be fighting a lot of the divergence spots because you're going to be having some hidden bearish divergence even on the daily actually you're going to have some hidden bearish divergence right here and right here making higher highs on the oscillator low significantly lower highs on the price action now again this is not confirmed just yet but if bitcoin does you know if bitcoin does close back down into the 3500s it, it will be um and then at that point in time you know what's bitcoin doing i mean it's just basically oscillating between the bearish control zone and the neutral zone and not able to get out of the neutral zone that's what the rsi is telling us it's telling us that this consolidation is still to, still to be considered pretty fucking bearish um, now, of course, I am making a huge assumption here that Bitcoin does turn down and does close down around here. If that were to be true, it could be the it could be the it could be the fact that we actually just saw the low of the day at 35.98 on GDAX, and it's going to continue on higher. Um, but I did want to get that out there. We do also do have daily Stokes. They are going to reach to get out of the bearish control zone right now. But again, you actually do something. You actually do notice something over here as well. We do have a nice trend line coming down ever since the December highs, which have been governing our highs. This was the first spike right over here that we just looked at. And then the second spike was the last spike to uh, 4,100. And then we're once again getting to the top of this range. Does that mean that Bitcoin can't break out above it? No, of course not. It doesn't. But it does tell us, tell us that there is resistance right around there. And this area also denotes the edge of the bearish control zone. So as long as we're below there, I am, you know, I'm cautious. I'm very, very cautious in the overall, you know, setup of this as everyone gets very, very bullish. And even the bears are looking for this to go higher into like the 4500s because fuck dole, you know and all that good shit but uh you know looking at this it does kind of help temper that the, those emotions by the way speaking of emotions i just recorded the first two videos of the trading psychology series and i'm really excited about that and i'll be uploading them i'm gonna put them on a schedule like one every week but i'm really excited about it and uh, and i and and i actually want people to suggest topics as well because that's going to make it like more interactive and probably more um you know more relevant but uh but for now i have quite a few quite a few good ones and i'm and and uh, and i've had a lot of fun recording them actually um again something that i'm that i'm probably even more passionate about than trading is just learning about your own self and, your, and the way that your own crazy mind works or just my crazy own mind um, maybe i'm projecting um but uh but over here on the 12 hour stokes you even see the same sort of a thing right you see the same thing actually i'll bring them down for this uh where can i get my huh um can i do it like that no that doesn't work Huh. All right. Well, whatever. Um, okay. So on 12 hour Stokes, we have the same sort of thing with, again, that spike over in De in late December on our highs of around 4,200 during this consolidation. And then our spike right over here in, um, in early January at around 4,100. Well, if Bitcoin could, you know, it, it, this is actually suggesting that Bitcoin can get a little bit higher and still fulfill these regions around the, you know, right around here, right around the 60 mark, which would be the edge of the bullish control zone. So you can see that bulls are being sheared off and, and not able to and kind of like slowly but surely losing their control so if it did pop back around here that would kind of make sense now that's a little bit in conflict with what we just saw in the daily but they're both but close enough is close enough as far as i'm concerned remember you get two 12-hour dollars within a one day so you know you could you could still certainly get that um 
and, uh, and and same thing on the RSI right over here. You do have some hidden bearish divergence going on. Or do you? Sorry, you do not. You actually do not. But we do see another trend line right here, actually, like literally right here, uh, getting shuffled out right around the 69 zone, which is great number. Um, we don't really have a rising, we don't really have a trend line or a support trend line on the bottom, but we do see that going all the way back actually even to, what is this, September. I mean, this is September, you know, when Bitcoin really started to coil up around the 6,000s area and really re retained that bearish posturing around that area, you know, as it, as it got ready, 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 more mature to break 6,000. Well, that's what we saw. So again, doing a little bit of a deep dive into these things right now. I typically don't do this because it's not, you know, it's not really warranted, but, uh, but I did want to show these sorts of things because they are, they are relevant. They are certainly relevant. Uh, I believe that we just put in a two day dildo last night. So with that is set in stone. We, uh, Bitcoin has actually done something that it hasn't done in about a month. It's actually closed a two day dildo above the yellow 21 exponential. You can see that last time it did that, it did get, it, it, it ultimately ended up getting rejected, but this is going to be the next big thing for me as well. If the next two day dildo, uh, ends below the 21 exponential, this is going to just look like another rejection of it to me. And we're probably going to get the same, you know, toppling over effect. We're going to look at some alts that are actually already doing that as well. And I believe a very similar thing on the RSI, the two day, two day RSI giving you again, if this, if this does turn down, if this does get confirmed as, as a, uh, as, as another low, as, as another local high, which it is not, it is not anywhere near actually being confirmed as a local high anytime soon. We got to, you know, we got to wait, wait at least, uh, I think three, three no four days We're, we'd have to wait at least four days we need to see at least two more we'd have to close below here and then have some continuation so it, it's nowhere near happening but if it did happen that would that you know that is the severity of of that area um and then two day stokes are crossed up for the first time in a very long time as well actually you got a little snake over here and then crawling back above the critical zone that's actually a pretty good sign that's actually a pretty good sign so so you know that uh, you know if I'm looking at the two day, I actually do think that this thing continues on for uh, further and forward. Uh, three day right over here, three day same sort of thing. We just I think we just set one in stone, um, and three day Stokes still not crossing up. They are getting down to the cr more critical zone, but uh, but another up three day dildo after, which is pretty likely after getting a bullish engulfing dildo like this. I mean this is a pretty powerful bullish engulfing. It's not just engulfing it like it's really fucking eating it up, you know. Um, so I'd imagine that it, at the very least, if, if it does pop back down and test this 35 40 uh support then it's probably gonna it's probably gonna give it a, a go at uh, 30 3800 i'd imagine um but again look at the volume catchers it's more and more apparent on the higher time frames right this is just another spike in the overall consolidation of this what I would interpret most likely as a bearish consolidation. Again, everything as far as the three day dildo time frame goes is very bearish. We got the three day dildo death cross right over here. We got the 21 cross and the downside of the of the 377, which is, you know, is this resisting price? I would say that is pretty damn close. Uh, we are above the 10 simple, but looking, you know, again, the stokes are still even crossed down. RSI is still in the bearish control zone. Uh, Jewel did give a did did give a perfect buy right on the bottom. The daily actually got it better. The daily got literally the day before at the ultimate low of of uh, uh, for for a buy, but you know, coming out of this area, it is, it, it's, it's a little bit left of center. It's not something that I would be too comfortable with. Although the jewel is quite powerful in and of, in and of itself. Uh, weekly over here, weekly Stokes still cross down, still cross down. We do get another tick on them later tonight at 7 PM East Santa time. Um, so a lot can happen between then, but I want to see what happens. Do we close above or below this red 10 simple moon average? We have been unable to close above it ever since uh august late august so it's been a while it's been a while and closing above it you know if, if we do close the weekly above the red 10 simple moon average i'm gonna go out on a limb here and say we probably work our way higher to four thousand probably do work work, uh, work its way higher to four thousand um that's coming in around 36 13 on gdax uh, check your exchange as it will differ um, but yeah, you know, you look at this area and this kind of does again, once again, get rid of a lot of those pesky emotions, thinking that, uh, thinking that something's actually changed because look at the volume catch for us on this, on this weekly deal on this, what, what people are looking at as like the ultimate low now, a reversal point, which is literally not done anything. It's literally not done. Any, this is delusional right now. Again, I want to be bullish along with everyone else, but delusion is delusion at the current moment. Um, volume. No. Taking out any major resistances as far as a weekly goes? No. Still living below the, the purple 200 exponential moving average? Yes. Hard to be fucking bullish off that. Really fucking hard to be bullish off that. Now, I would even go out on a limb and say that the purple 200 exponential moving average is so fucking important to me that if Bitcoin could both open and close a weekly total above it, I would 
consider taking some longs and I and 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 the weight of that statement I need to explain because I really don't like taking longs and bear markets. And when, I'm, and when I say take a long, I mean like a, a real long, not just, you know, a hedge, not just a little bit of a scalp. I'm talking about like, you know, a real directional long. If Bitcoin does take out that area, it's probably going to have a nice run. It's pr it's very likely to have a pretty damn impressive run. Um, I'd imagine there's very little stopping it from 5,000 at that point. Uh, I mean, e even then... I. Is, is there is there really been anything? I mean, I suppose there's a little bit at five thousand. Six, I mean, six thousand is the next big area, as far as I'm concerned. Um, anyways, Bitcoin ticking down right now, not a huge deal. I mean, it's just a few bucks uh, ebb and flow here and there. But do we have new lows on the day? I am curious about that. Uh, let's see. Where was the low of yesterday? It was ninety seven dollars on GDAX, and we have ticked down to ninety eight dollars. What about BitMexico over here? BitMexico ticking down. Uh, thirty five ninety five uh, yesterday, thirty five ninety five today. What about Bitstamp? Do we have new lows here? We do not. We're about six bucks off the low. So yeah, still has some work. You know, again, gotta be uh, gotta be careful. Ooh, BitMex down another dollar, baby, another dollar. Uh, so getting really excited right now. But again, you know, it, it does look like the lower time time frames do want to come down. Like I said, uh, the question to me is, does thirty five twenty to thirty five forty give the support that you'd want to see if this thing is going to give another try higher. Um, so again, I, I wouldn't be surprised if Bitcoin puts in a lot of time within this within this area, you know, just kind of oscillating in that area. So yeah, going back on over here to GDAX to a more fresh chart, let's put on a FIB. And I do have a few things to talk about from the Fibonacci perspective um, and something that is actually quite important right now. And let's put this guy on and do this guy right over here. Again, FIBs uh, giving us a good insight into what the bots and algos are doing. You know, you have this beautiful major, major downtrend over here. 50% off the uh, off the consolidation and get your first big bounce. We can make a retracement off that and it goes all the way up there, pops down to the 618, gets front ran a little bit. Where's the sell target going to be? Right over here. I've, I've gone through this a million times, probably annoying for you, but it's good to repeat and there there is something new to be aware of right now. Pops back down all the way to the 618, gets, you know, and then gets run up to the 382 right over there and that is sold off as a target would imply. Comes back down to the 618, gets picked up once again. Where's the target going to be? The 0.5. Then comes back down to the 618 and it breaks. It gets walked down and it finally breaks. And then we come down to the 786, of which we spend a lot of time going sideways at. And once we broke back above this area, that was the big tell for me that it was probably going to, you know, have a nice, nice rocket mode, man, uh, move up. Now, of course, that happened a little bit faster than I, uh, than, you know, than, you know, than, than, than I was really looking for. But again, that's why I'm not a time analyst. I don't think that time analysis can be done. It's just like if this area gets destroyed, I don't see anything stopping it from this area. So it took it, it took full advantage of that. Um, again, making it look making it look a little bit more, making it look like technical analysis a little bit more impressive than it truly is. I don't want to insinuate that 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 it's going to look like that every time that I suggest something like that. It's not going to. Typically, things take time. That was an example of. Uh, of a major area being taken out and so we could fly up above though but as you can see the 786 was bought up and where's the target going to be the 0.5 the 0.5 was pretty much nailed to a t um as far as i'm concerned i mean depending upon how you how you uh, chart this uh, if you use wicks you could say that it actually was hit exactly to the wick or or a little or run up a little bit more not too much more, like 20 bucks, uh, not a huge deal. But again, if this area is sold and then we lose a 618, as far as I'm concerned to the downside, that would likely imply that we're headed back down to the 786. If the 0.5 gets sold and then the 618 fails, so again, I've you know I've been relating these ideas with exponentials and horizontal supports and and whatnot. But now to get an insight into what the bots and algos are doing, if you know if I'm looking at this, that's what I'm thinking. That's what I'm thinking. So if six one eight breaks, we're going back down to the seven eight six, and then that is just again a bearish consolidation as price action gets crunched and crunched and crunched in that beautiful fumigator uh, before getting you know fully mature to actually break one way or the other. Uh, in this case, it would like it would be to the downside. Um, so again, you know, you do see, you know, you, you, you do see a lot of a uh, lot of confluences in this area. I mean, we even have a nice uh, horizontal trend line right here. There you go. Um, right around that uh, 37, basically 
the kind of like the high of where the, of the area for that we're at right now. But again, remember, if Bitcoin does take out the 0.5, essentially, if Bitcoin does take out this horizontal, I'm going to call it 3,700. You can call it the 0.5. You can call it whatever the fuck you want. The descending trend line of this overall consolidation. If Bitcoin takes that area out, it's very likely to be a, a very quick move to this 4,000 area. We will not stop at the 382. I mean, if, if you do stop at the 382, it's going to be very it's going to be very short, very likely. Uh, it's probably going to be like another one of these moves over here. Again, do I think that that's going to happen? I mean, I don't really have a comment on that. I, I think that's less likely when we're just cons uh, creating lower highs. But hey, you know, if Bitcoin does break above that area, that's that's what I'd be thinking. And again, my opinion is not necessary. My opinion is not needed. I don't trade my opinion. My opinion is fucking worthless. My opinion is wrong all the time. Technical analysis is something that I can trust in and something that I can use for over a series of time to set up a statistical advantage, statistical edge, which I can play just by, you know, more, you know, more takes essentially. Again, and even that's not perfect. The best of the best traders that I know, the best of the best, literally the best. Some of the, like the guys that I worked around, um, my colleagues on the floor of New York Stock Exchange, ARK, and then later above uh, Chicago Boards Ops Exchange, literally the best doing this for 30 to 40 years. Even their technical analysis is not, I mean, their technical analysis is goddamn good, but are they right on every trade? No. In fact, uh, nowhere near. But good enough. Good enough to make a shit ton of money, which is all you need to do. So again, that will actually be covered a lot in the psychological series. Um, but for now, you know, this is essentially the lower times as far as I'm concerned uh, with Mr. Bitcoin over here. Um, we can quickly go over GBTC. GBTC looks to me like it wants to take another leg up um, and fill this gap right around the $4.69 region here. Um, it would not take much to get it there. So what would that imply for spot price? If that if if it were to get there, well, you can see that we wouldn't really necessarily be making higher highs in this in this guy over here. Uh, in fact, if we make this ascending trend line, which is what I believe we're doing, it looks something like this. And where's this ascending trend line resistance coming in around? Right around that that gap. Um, so where would that put price action at? I think it would put it somewhere around the the area that we're looking at. Um, you know, I I I do think so. You know, maybe it gives, a, maybe uh, it probably gives another try into this area. Maybe that, maybe that implies 4,000. I'm not quite sure. I'm not quite sure. We'll have to see how it opens up on Monday. That's going to be the big tell. And really, it's just, it's just a game of waiting. Anything else, I'm just going to be, I'm just, I'm basically just talking out of my ass uh, with anything else. And it's, and it's inappropriate to do, especially on a video like this, when you're talking about, you know, very high time frame ideas. What's more appropriate to say is we need to see where it opens on Monday in relation to spot price, and then we can go forwards and make a, an actual, you know, an actual analysis on it. Right now, it's more, it's too, it's so speculative that it's a, a small fuck up in this is going to lead to a major, major fuck up in, in an actual trade. So again, that's what I can say about that. That's the area that I'm looking for. We have that in stone, but we don't have the rest of the, uh, we, we don't have the rest of the equation. Now, I do want to bring up this. I do want to bring up this the crypto fear and greed index now you'll remember we were watching it um last week and that was one of the big things kind of holding me back from you know from taking the stop loss off on a short no of course not um but basically you know one of the things making me think okay we're probably gonna bounce you know we, we could bounce here and it could be it could be that night that uh, that move to test the top side of the range because it was literally below 20. It was like at 18 or 19 or something like that. Extreme fear. We are now at just regular fear at 42. And you can see how high this thing goes on just a very small move. At the end of the day, Bitcoin had a, what, like a $300 move, which got faded about, you know, $100 already. <sighs> um, you know, 34 to 3,700 is about $300 move. And now we're, now we're sitting at 3,600. So already, you know, 30% down. Um, you can see how quickly this thing goes up. This thing goes up so fucking fast in relation to price action that it is just silly. And this is very, very scary. This is very scary because you can imagine that if Bitcoin does take up any more. It's going to, you know, it's really going to start to get up there back into like greed. We're going to get into greed pretty soon. I mean, anywhere above, uh, you know, anywhere a few ticks above, we, we will start to get back into greed. And this is not so good at getting the lows. It does tell you to be cautious when this thing is at the lows, which is what it did over here. But you can see on the highs, it gets these very well because I mean, it's been, well, yeah, it's, it's been it's been basically getting the whole thing since the bear market started in February of 2018. It goes one year back. You can see that this is actually creating a trend line, just making lower highs all the way through. And we are getting really close to that 
to, to the resistance of that trend line as far as this oscillator would go. Again, a little bit a thing of a, a little bit left of center when it comes to looking at this, but it is interesting to me, and it does it does follow that if we if we even take even, even up a little bit more, or even perhaps if if uh, where we are right now. There is you can, you can kind of just visualize a trend line going between all the tops, which get the tops very well. This was a top before the break of six thousand. This was a top before eight thousand to six thousand. This was a top of ten thousand to six thousand. This was the top, you know, in like uh, off the bounce, off that first big bounce in February after Bitcoin went basically uh, did, did a one hundred percent gain, did 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 a two x off of six thousand down to, or over to twelve thousand and then putting a top right there and then back down once again. So again, this is this is concerning. This is very concerning. Whoa, hey, I just saw that. Okay, now we've actually got new lows on the day. There we go. Uh, Bitcoin coming down now. And let's see. Yeah, all exchanges are making uh, are, are making, uh, you know, new new lows for the day, new lows for, for the weekend, I suppose. Um, again, I'd be looking for 3560 uh, initial support and then 3530, the big one. 3530, very important. 3530, incredibly important. Um, so watch, be watchful of that one. Is that's 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 the big one to hold. If that one does not hold, then then this picture immediately becomes a lot more gloomy, and a lot of things will be confirmed as uh, as lower highs. And we're gonna have the divergent spots starting to play their shit out, and then we're gonna have well, then I mean, if this area breaks, I mean that's you're gonna have a lot of the uh, a lot of the breakout traders gonna have stop losses right here as well. So that's fuel to the fire if it does break to the downside. Um, okay, cool. Alrighty, uh, CMEs. By the way, close thirty five ninety five. Uh, end of we um, end of Friday. So what does that mean? Well, that means that if price action is if if, if spot exchanges are opening or sorry, if spot exchanges are trading lower when CMEs open later today at six p.m. Eastern time, not seven but six, then if it comes back and fills a gap, that's probably that's going to be a sell to me. Now, if 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 spot exchanges do op if if spot exchanges are trading higher. And uh, it, when CMEs opens, which again needs to get back above 3,600, um, then then the opposite. I'd actually be looking for a buy for a bounce. But again, I don't like this. And the CMEs really help get rid of a lot of the bullshit of the spot exchanges. So let's actually spend a few seconds here, and you can see that the that the 200 exponential and the four-hour delta time frame is still resisting price. It's still doing a pretty goddamn good job of it, um, actually. And if we go to the daily, perhaps we might see a little bit more. Yeah, we are poking our heads up above the yellow 20 minute exponential and it would not be it's certainly not a question to, to pop back down and test that area at 3505 uh, but again look at the volume on this uh, there there is nothing there's literally nothing done no as far as the professional trading went no one fucking bought on friday this, this isn't like this is really insane we could okay so can i bring it up over here okay you got you guys can't really see that but um, let's see, we'll, we'll bring this guy over here. Uh, look at the volume over here. It's, it's very difficult to see. I'll read it out. But to give you an idea on a major bar like this, about almost 13,000 uh, contracts were traded, which is really like times five because, wow, Bitcoin coming down a little bit harder now. Um, uh, which is really times five because that's you know what what each contract is worth. But we'll just we'll just equate it to this. Anyways, uh, 13,000 right over here. Uh, this guy right over here, 6,000. This guy right over here, this nice spike over here, 6,000 again. This, this guy right over here, 9,000. Uh, this guy right over here, this, this major top, this, this nice top over here, uh, 9,000. Okay, so what do we do on Friday on that big bad move? Literally, it says zero. I don't, that can't be right. That, uh, that can't be right. Um, <laughs> that, that literally cannot be right. Let's go down to a lower time frame. Maybe a four hour look at it. Yeah, okay, there we go. Yeah, about 5,000. 5,000 on that four hour delta. So again, is that a major momentous shifting move? I would argue unlikely. I would argue it's unlikely. Uh, okay, so Bitcoin, how, how far did we get down on that last uh, on the last drop? Yeah, coming all the way down almost to the 200 exponential on the four hour. Not quite there just yet though. Not quite there just yet. Uh, hourly support, 55 is coming in right around there. Yes, yeah, two hour that, that caught this guy. Again, think that this one does work a little bit lower, but you know, selling, uh, <laughs> sellers coming back in. Um, okay, cool. So we've looked at uh, CMEs, we've looked at GBTC. Now let's get into some long-term analysis. Okay, so first things first, I wanna talk about why do you, why why I believe that the bottom is not in for Bitcoin. And then we'll talk about what I wanna see and then we'll talk about, uh, and then we'll talk about future projections. Okay, so why is the bottom not in for Bitcoin? Well, 
I'm going to use Bitstamp for this. And I actually want to, I, I quickly want to address this because a lot of people have been commenting, uh, commenting something which I, I thought was a troll at first, but I guess I'll just I'll briefly go over it, um, saying, why do you use Bitstamp as an exchange? Why do you use Bitstamp as an exchange, Crown? No one uses it anymore. We are, an we are in an environment where arbitrage is available. So when looking at this from a historical perspective, it is all related to each other. When arbitrage is available, there's always going to be some sort of relating factor between these exchanges. And it's not necessarily getting the full, you don't, ne you don't need to aggregate them all together because they're all going to naturally look about the same. How can you how can you verify this for yourself? Don't just trust what I'm about to say. Just verify it for yourself. You know that's the whole fucking motto of Bitcoin, right? All right, look at the look at the characteristics of this. This is Bitstamp. Does this look any different than what you see over here on GDAX? That looks pretty fucking similar. Does that look any different than what you see over here on on Bitfinex? Looks pretty much the fucking same. I mean these these are very easily verifiable things that all you have to do is just fucking look for yourself. Fucking look for yourself. God damn. Sorry, getting a little bit worked up. But please, you know, understand these things and, and, and don't take this as me. I don't want to be talking down to anyone. I don't I don't want to feel like I'm ever being neglectful or anything like that. Please be you be the one to call me out if you feel like I'm ever being disrespectful. But I do want to say these sorts of things, you you gotta be able to verify this for yourself. I'm sorry. But these are very, 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 very easily seen things. You don't need to know the underlying mark dynamics. You don't even know, need to know about arbitrage. You just need to fucking look. You just need to fucking look, man. That's all. Uh, the only exchange that's going to look different than the other ones is BitMEX because BitMEX didn't really have, like, people weren't even really using it um, until, until like, mid-2018 because people wanted to, like, start shorting Bitcoin, right? Um it didn't. It didn't get. It didn't start to get pretty damn big until until like deep into 2018, I'd say. Uh, but all the other exchanges, you can look at them. It's the same reads on all of them. Yes, the numbers might be slightly different here and there, but that's all good as long as they are related to each other and re relevant to each other. That's what we can go off of. That's completely usable. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> All right, so uh, okay, so enough about that tirade. But uh, but basically, okay, so as far as the bottom goes, you know, typically speaking, people want to be looking at uh, people want to be looking at massive, massive volume being done on what could be a capitulation low. Bitcoin actually being bought up pretty well over here. Um, and, uh, and I would say that we do not have that. We do not have that because this volume catches over here is related in volume, or sorry, in coins traded, not dollars traded. So to relate this guy over here and say, this is a massive spike, and this is a massive spike, and because they're like kind of near each other, well, that really discounts the underlying fact, which I'm gonna go into the MVT signal as well, because I always get this fucking comment as well. Crowd, have you looked at the MVT signal on a weekly? It's a, it's secondly buy. It's like, oh my God. <laughs> read fucking read just read it it's right there in front of your face <laughs> oh well, anyways um but uh but but the volume catch related in in coins traded is going to be very deceiving because over here when bitcoin costs 10,000 13,000 15,000 it's going to be a lot more you don't need to put on as many coins to have the same sort of account exposure as you would over here when bitcoin is 3500 so we can look at this in dollars traded and with this indicator again you can verify this yourself whoops I, if you can spell it right that's even better maybe i'm just doing myself a disservice right here um here we go bitcoin dollar volume and looking at this you can see very easily is this volume over here which by the way was all selling on the major dildo that brought you below the exponential movement average which tells me that bit, that that was a massive momentous move taking us to a new phase of the market cycle <sighs> jesus fucking christ um not capitulation not even on the low bitcoin went another what like 30 percent lower after that after this guy over here yeah 20 percent lower nice bottom bro nice fucking bottom uh <laughs> nice bottom bro that's a bottom i love to buy bro <laughs> Bro, you seen that bottom? <laughs> That's an amazing bottom to buy. <laughs> Anyways, uh, yeah, so you look at this and, uh, and it's very rapidly available that uh, this, not so much capitulation as what you had uh, or, or, or not so much in relation to what you had over here. I mean, to even you know, put a percentage on it, even in this area, you know, more than 100%, almost 150%, all the way to the to the spike, which it doesn't need to get this high, it doesn't need to get exactly this high, but it would, you know, I do want to see something relatable, relatable, that's all. Uh, that is 300%, 300% higher, 300% uh, more volume done in that dildo, 
300 fucking percent more volume done. It's not insane. <laughs> Three times, like, I think that's four times. Um, so again, uh, this area over here is just a testament to the fact that no one's fucking trading right now, man. Uh, retailers are mostly wrecked and most of the people who believe that the bottom in is in are not people who bought here because they believe the bottom is in it's because they bought here is what I typically notice the people who bought at 6,000 or, or anywhere above 6,000 God forbid 20,000 um, those are typically the people purport, per, perpetuating this myth that the bottom is in right now it's more delusional hopium rather than legitimate analysis um, as far as I, as far, as far as I see now, would I be willing to change this around? Well, absolutely. We'll get into that after I describe a little bit more why I don't believe that the bottom is in for right now. I just believe that this is a bounce off the 200, uh, simple moving average, just like we had over here. Um, and yes, the, the 200 simple moving average, I mean, th this, just looking at this says we could very easily get to 4,000 and test the 200 exponential moving average. Anyway, sorry, I'm taking way too much time. Okay. So as far as capitulation also goes, uh, when you are changing a major macro market cycle, I do want to see. I do wanna see what Bitcoin's personal characteristics are of that. Now, remember, when it comes to analyzing, um, when it comes to analyzing all different uh, asset classes, whether it's, you know, Forex, commodities, magic net money, and where I come from as an equity options market maker, we see these very, very similar general guides on how assets will play out on market cycles. So there, there, there's like these general rules, uh, essentially. I don't want to call them rules. I want to call them a guide. And then within the uh, within the context of that, a specific asset will, will have its own little personality. So Bitcoin, Bitcoin has shown its personality in the past to have, you know, we, we have a few examples of capitulation on this screen. We have a couple that are just really obvious, but I'm going to go over... I'm going to go over the most obvious ones right here and right here. Uh, both this guy right over here and this guy right over here. And, you know, we could even do this guy right over here, I suppose. Um, those are actually examples of, of how Bitcoin has done in the past. Now, of course, it, was this your ultimate low? No, but it was a good example. It, it, it was an example of what it could be. And you can see over here that Bitcoin bounces literally within this one week dildo about 50%. And within about two weeks or, or sorry, with, within about two weeks, almost uh, almost 100%. Over here in 2014, 2015, Bitcoin bounces up within a one week dildo, literally 69%. Within two weeks, 100%. Over here in this phase, which actually this was a capitulation, but I, I wouldn't say that it was, uh, I, I wouldn't say that it was like a market cycle in, in and of itself. What, how much do you do in this, in this dildo? 50%. How much in two weeks? 60%. So not bad, but but not as good as the other ones. Again, I don't believe that, that was a market cycle, but it was it was an example of what of of how Bitcoin can play out its capitulations. Now, that percentage bounce compared to what we've done right now is pretty anemic as Bitcoin over the course of sorry, over the course of literally uh what is it? 11 weeks, 12 weeks now. 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9, 10, 11, 12. Yeah, 12 weeks. The highest it's gotten is about 25% all the way here. All the way here. And and what it, and, and remember, the other ones did that in one week. And really, it was done mostly in the span of about a day or two. It was really done in the span of about a, a day or two. So that brings me to, to my next point. Bitcoin has spent far too long at the actual low, being far too generous with, with giving people not only not only uh, multiple days to buy at the low, but now two chances to buy at the low, essentially. I mean, within, you know, within about a few percent. Uh, God damn it. Come on, computer. Work. You motherfucker. I'm trying to update my chart right now if you're wondering what's going on while I'm, while I'm going into an autistic rage. You bastard. How dare you? Oh, this is so embarrassing. Let me see if uh, if a good refresh will uh, will help this guy out. Come on, baby, come on. Show me the bitcoins. All right, this looks like we're going. Maybe I can try my other screen over here, um, and we can do some of this. Yeah, it's working on my other screen. That's that's weird. Yeah. Okay, it's slowly coming back in. All right, cool. Um, great. Okay, crisis averted. I suppose. Alrighty. Okay, we'll go back on over here. Okay, so uh, again, going over to the daily. Remember that the f one of the big rules of market cycles is that they don't give you a second chance to buy the ultimate low. They give you one, and they really give you about in Bitcoin's case about half an hour to an hour or so ar around that time frame. As you can see on the current low, or what would be the low, we have one, two, three, four days spent there. Four days. That's far too fucking generous. And then over here, Bitcoin gets within about a hundred, two hundred bucks of it. And if, let's just look at this as a percentage. We get within about five percent of it. 
we get within about 5% of it. That is far too generous. Again, going back on over here to 2014, 2015. Oh, this is so, this is so God awful right now. This, this is such like first world problems. It's like my chart won't update. Ah, my fucking charts, my charts. <laughs> God damn, man. Oh, all right. Uh, please work. Maybe I'll, I'll bring up another uh, trading view over here. I don't know why it's being slower. Um, it's massively embarrassing and massively annoying. So I do, I do sympathize with, uh, with you, the viewer, um, if you are being annoyed by not only my nails on the chalkboard, raspy lesbian voice, but also these slow as fuck charts. All right, so I do have my, I do have my other screen over here, uh, operating, fully operational. Um, okay, cool. So yeah, you know, you see in 2014 on this spike load, does Bitcoin get anywhere near this ever again? No. Well, it might look like, sorry, it might look like that. So let's actually give it some due diligence. It might actually look like that. But look at this. When you actually look at a percentage gain off that, the closest that ever comes back to it is, is about 35%. 35% versus what we saw over here, 5%. So that's that's not fucking good enough, man. That's not fucking good enough. We can get rid of that other window, and we'll just work off this one now. Um, so yeah, that is also concerning as well. What are some other things that that I like to see on an actual major market low? Well, we looked at three so far. We looked at volume. We looked at um, we looked at the, the at the bounce off the low. We looked at the time spent at the low. All zero for three so far. Now let's bring up let's bring up uh, the good old MVT signal, the good old MVT signal, which. It's pretty damn good at doing lows. And again, if you're trying to use the MVT signal on a weekly or a monthly, fucking read. Just just literally there's instructions on it. there's instructions. <laughs> you can read it for yourself. Don't use it's you need to use it on daily. That's what it's that's what it's designed for. All right. Um MVT signal is kind of uh, kind of interesting over here because we are nowhere near the bottoming area. Now, typically speaking, it flashes a green, which which is indicative of a major bottom, not a market cycle bottom, but a major bottom, which we got over here in February on that down that we looked at. Remember that down that we looked at, which I purported as a as an example of what capitulation can look like. By the way, there's actually another example of what of what capitulation can look like over here uh, when Bitcoin went from 20,000 to 10,000 in the span of a couple of days. And again, just another, you know, in the span of one day, bouncing up 50 fucking percent. I mean, it's insane. It's fucking insane. Um, to give you an idea, but again, Bitcoin nowhere near that, uh, no, uh, nowhere near that, 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 that 50 marker that denotes a major bottom. Um, this thing has been, uh, perfect actually in calling all the major bottoms in Bitcoin's history. We have, uh, uh, in, uh, every major bottom and every, sorry, in every, sorry, every market cycle bottom has been perfect calling it. Now, every major bottom, it's been pretty good at calling those major bottoms. Like it didn't get this right here. didn't get this right here, but it does get this right here. So it, it's, it's. It's a little bit, uh, a little bit more sophisticated than that. Now we do call the major bottom in 2014. We do call the major bottom over here in 2013. We do call the major bottom over here in 2012. We do call the mo the major bottom over here in 2011 as well. Very good. Not bad. Not bad for an indicator. Uh, per per perfectly perfect on all the market cycle uh, highs and lows. Now you can see, are we anywhere near that area right now? Well, relatively speaking, I would say no. We're around the 90 marker, which is. A lot similar to this area over here as what we're looking at over here. Actually, in fact, we're literally in the same area on the as far as the MBT signal is concerned. Literally right here, I'm going to put in a marker, and you can see that this area is being reflected. If I fast forward to the future, backed man to the future, uh, yeah, right around the same area. And you actually do see Bitcoin putting in a very similar uh, signature. Let's go back to a weekly. Come on, chart update, please. Yes. Oh, yes, it's working. Oh, that's awesome, man. That is awesome. Um, so we'll. So again, if you look at this as far as a weekly goes, you're looking at the look. I'm looking at the volume characters of this guy over here in relation to the in relation to this uh, in relation to this major dump right over here, and I want to see. And, and what I see is very is a very similar signature to what you had over here in relation to this guy right over here. What I want to see on a major mark cycle bottom is I want to see similar volume on your capitulation or sorry on, on your parabolic cycle right over here in relation to your capitulation over here. These need to be relative to each other, not exact, but relative. Uh, what I see more over here, I see this guy here and this guy here very similar to this guy over here and this guy over here. Again, I know, and I, I understand that people hate it when I say over here, but I can't fucking repeat those numbers all goddamn day long. Just watch the video, please. Uh, it's, it's like there's an hour-long video. Please just, please just, watch, please just watch it. It's really hard to type these sorts of things. Um, but uh, 
Uh, but again, you know, looking at, um, you know, looking at this and then going back to that daily, we have not only the same read, but we have a very similar signature on the MBT signal right now as well. Again, going back on over here and we'll go back to this 2014 area. And looking at this area, you do see that price action makes a higher high. So what the what the bears are saying right now is that, okay, so we have fractal and that means that Bitcoin made a higher high over here after that, at, you know, after that nice 50% drop down that you saw off of this ascending triangle and then bounces up, you know, bounces up what, like, tw uh, tw uh, what is this about, Jesus Christ, I'm doing it wrong. Um, if we use dildo body, dildo body is going to be about 25, 26%. Yeah, again, you know, very similar to what we saw in 2019, right? And then looking at the MBT signal, we do have a very similar read as well. We're in that 90 marker and we put in a very similar signature. So I'm going to go, I'm going to fast forward into this area. And what are we doing? We come all the way down again, a 50% drop off of this consolidation. And then what, and then what we pump back up about 25, 25 so percent. Yeah. About right around, right around there. Um, and then you get a very similar read on the MBT. So you, know, you come to all the way down, put in a high, pop back down, put in a higher high, pop back down. And we've actually put in another higher high over here. So could it be, could it be that this is to be considered the first kind of spike and then we come back and then we're going to put in the second spike soon because we are making higher highs in the MBT. And by the way, now we have divergence on the MBT and divergence when, when you have bearish divergence on the MBT, it's very bad. It's very bad. So price action, I want to see making higher highs over this when the MBT ratio is getting higher as well. But right now we see the MBT ratio getting higher and price action is about $500 below the last high on that last spike. So that is divergence in the truest sense of it. That's a problem. That is a problem. So again, um, you know, when Bitcoin does those sorts of things, it is, you know, it has signaled in the past some very, 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 very nasty, uh, nasty drop downs. Um, so yeah, you know, be, be aware of this. Uh, the second that Bitcoin gets back, or sorry, the second that the MBT zone gets back below that, that moving average uh, that you see in the orange, that's when pressure will once again be on as far as I'm concerned. Um, so again, keep that in mind. Keep that in mind as an external factor. Now let's go to another thing that I typically, uh, uh, that, that, that I put a shit ton of weight on in traditional markets, and that is a historical volatility rank, which again, if you're not familiar with this as an indicator, it oscillates between zero and one, one being highest highest likelihood of inflection point zero being well consolidation and likely to break out or break down what it's essentially telling you is it's essentially telling you about the it's essentially telling you about the mean reversion to a to a period of returns in an asset's life over you know over its history whatever that period might be um so in this in this case right over here we got all the way to a 0.66 on that last major down well, that sounds great in the overall context of things, but when we zoom it out, when Bitcoin puts in major tops and major bottoms, it's going to be flashing a one read on this or close to a one. And that's exactly what we had over here on the top, over here on the bottom, over here on this spike low, over here on this spike low, over here on this spike high, this spike low, this spike high, this spike high, this spike high, this spike low, which is which was the last market cycle low, this spike high over there. Again, really damn good at getting those and we did not flash any sort of major major read on this and again bitcoin there's never been an instance of bitcoin putting in a major mark cycle low without flashing a one on this as far as we can see um let's go over here to the blx index and again major mark cycle lows are we always hitting it yes we are we got one over here we got one over and back on so let's go check out something interesting now as so this is something I've actually never talked about. And sorry, we can't really use the BLX index for this. It's I'm, I'm, uh, I'm actually realizing that this is probably not going to be a relevant indicator for this just because there, there's some, there's some inconsistencies within the BLX index. Probably have to go to Bitstamp. Bitstamp has it better. Yeah, we do have a low right there. Major low. Again, this was not a market cycle in and of itself. Not enough history to go back before that, but yeah. Okay. All right. Cool. All right. So now we're going to look at something new. This is the Bitcoin network momentum. This is something interesting that uh, I think is more proprietary than anything. Um, I believe Willie Wu has put it together. It's pretty fucking interesting. And, uh, and, and, and I think 
it's still a little bit incomplete, but there is something interesting going on here. There's something interesting going on and that, that's why I wanted to bring it up. Now, when this indicator, when this oscillator on the bottom starts going up, when it starts trending up and breaking above where my cursor is right now, at the at the two um, two hundred thousand mark on the, uh, two hundred sorry point two on the ratio uh, on chain vol yeah on chain volume point two point two on on the uh, on on the on chain volume that's when your bull markets are confirmed. The last time that we confirmed it was on the break of he of this area right here I believe at uh, on the break above five hundred. Now when I go back into it you can see that we are nowhere near that mark. We are about in the middle of where it typically, um, you know, of, of where it's pretty overdone to the downside. But even when it gets overdone to the downside, it's not until it actually starts trending up where the major lows are put in. As you can see, this was your major low in 2014, 2015. The oscillator is actually getting closer and closer to the bull market cycle uh, read again that point two read you can see over here we are still trending down as it speaks or sorry as you know as, as I speak we're putting in lower highs and you could even make a nice trend line so again could we have more room to the upside on this run sure sure we could but it still has a lot of work to do from a from a greater general perspective um, to change you know the overall picture so that's kind of what I wanted to get out there Again, a little bit of an experimental thing, but interesting nonetheless, interesting nonetheless. You do see the same read in 20, 2012, 2013, Mark Zucker right over there, and I do believe that that is you know, relevant and worthwhile. So again, with all these things, I am not, uh, I do not look at this current area as, as, as a major Mark cycle low. I look at it as a local low, and, uh, and we can have rallies off local lows, absolutely. I mean, there's no, no problem with that. But remember, until, you know, at, with that in mind, I'm going to run with the assumption that it is not the ultimate low. What I, what I would have to see in order for me to reconsider that, and I'm completely co cool with reconsidering that and, uh, and, and adjusting my views, but I need to see three things. First things first, I need to see a higher high on the daily. So getting back above 4,100, that would be a good sign. That would be a good sign. Um, you know, obviously breaking breaking above our current uh, our, our the, the current resistance of our of our uh, triangle area at around thirty seven fifty. But does that does that change all that much? I mean, it's the easiest thing to do. It'd be the best sign, and you really don't have too much stopping from about four thousand at that point. Um, but uh, <clears throat> but uh, other things are a little bit more important, more important right now. Uh, the weekly the 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 most important thing to me is the weekly two hundred exponential, as I alluded to before. If Bitcoin can both open and close a weekly deal above there, I immediately change a lot of my views and I'll and I'd probably take some longs as well um, but as long as Bitcoin is both opening and closing weekly deals below there I'm not too bullish in the meantime we do have the monthly the monthly green 55 exponential coming in right around where current price action is or actually a little bit higher right now uh, that was at 3672 now we have a wick up on this month at 3727 and we have broken the green 55 exponential for the first time in bitcoin's history last month january so now this month will be the first month that has a chance to actually both open and close below it which you know is confirmed kill of an exponential in a higher time from as far as i'm concerned and the reason why this is relevant is because where is that green 55 exponential coming in around? Well, again, 3672, what number does that also match up with or around? That would be the upper resistance of this triangle that we're living in right now at around 3700. And if we put in a horizontal, it'd, it'd be right at, at like 36, uh, 3675, uh, you know, area. So again, that to me tells me that yes, you know, if I'm looking for trades, this area is in the worst area to do it in, uh, at least at least to try one in. Now, I actually don't really have a real, I don't have a real trade opened right now. I really want to get another try higher. Um, I have a very small short open from 3680. It's, I, I, I ended up scalping most of it, um, and uh, and I'll probably scalp the rest of it if we actually do head back down to 35, uh, 30 ish area, give or take a few bucks. Um, and then look for hopefully another, you know, another boost back into that range to hope to also be rejected if that's going to play out. Now, of course, the reason why I like that trade is because I want to, you know, I, I, I see a good risk reward opportunity. doesn't mean it's always going to work out. Of course, there's variability in the market. Weird things can happen, but, <laughs> but it's worth a trade for me. Um, now with this monthly over here, we could easily get a wick above the green 55 exponential at 3672. I mean, we can wick all the way up. 
to 4,000. And it would still just be another lower high as far as even the wicks are concerned. Remember, the wick of the last monthly dildo was 41.27 and a half on, uh, on, on BLX over here. So what does that mean? Well, it means that Bitcoin, you know, if Bitcoin even did go to 4,000 and end the month below 36.70, Still got a fucking problem, right? Still got a fucking problem. So again, keep in mind the higher time frames. They are gonna they are gonna help save you from the delusional uh, the, the the delusional outlook that I typically see around uh, around the great, highly self esteemed, uh, amazing, altruistic venues of crypto, Twitter, crypto, YouTube, crypto, whatever the fuck you know. So again, keep these in mind. Um, as far as monthly is concerned, as long as we're as long as we're living below the green fifty five exponential, I am actually looking for the eighty nine cyan to get hit. Now, this is going to take some time. This is a monthly. This can take, you know, fucking, I don't know, it could take months. I mean, probably going to take months. <laughs> probably going to take months. Again, I have no comment on the actual timing of these things. I do have comments on on my belief in the actual low, on my uh, on what I need to see, and, and those sorts of things. But on on timing, not so much. Not so much. I don't want to, to misrepresent uh, uh, that that sort of thing. So again, um, yeah, Bitcoin can get a wick above, but as long as it closes the 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 the, the month below the 3672 green 25 exponential on the monthly, still very 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 intense pressure down. And if that were to happen by end of month, if if we even were to get a wick up above and then close back down below the end of the month, that would be worth a major trade for me, a major major trade. Um, so yeah. Alrighty. Um, okay, cool. So we covered that. We covered that. Uh, let's get in some more. Let's get in some future projections right now. So future projections. Okay. So I am a long-term believer in Bitcoin. While I do talk about some, you know, lower targets, which actually never even talked about the lower targets. Let's actually talk about these really quick. Uh, lower targets. Okay. So Bitcoin does break the current lows, or basically the 200 simple moving average, which is currently around 33.15. Then I do look towards, at the very least, this next blue box territory here at 2300 to 2600. That will match up with a measured move off the current uh, triangular formation that we're working on. Um, but I do want to do something really quick as well. You know, with this being a consolidation, what if it breaks it up to the upside? Where at that point towards? Uh, 4,500, 4,550. So a lot of people are looking at 4,550. I guess that's where they're getting that from. So fair enough. Good to, good to know that. We should actually mark this area off. But, you know, with a triangular consolidation, especially in this formation, more likely to break out to the downside. Uh, and if it does break out to the downside, then the measure move will be pointing us all the way down where? All the way down towards, oh, you guessed it, 20, you know, 24, 2500, actually 2550. So that would be right in the thick of the middle of that blue box territory that we just looked at. And that blue box territory is also rounded up by several things. It's rounded up by the 886 Fibonacci trace mode, which is actually where Bitcoin did bottom out in 2014 right here on that nice spike low. It, it also does have some nice historical horizontal trend lines as we just saw in this range. Jesus, this is all floaty right now. And if we do put on the volume profile, we will notice that there is some massive uh, volume nodes, higher value nodes being done in this area. Uh, I do need to adjust this. Uh, let's go to row size, maybe 75. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, you see, you see some nice higher value nodes being done in this area. Now, if Bitcoin does, you also notice that it, as soon as Bitcoin loses a 3,300 support, it's going to likely be another straight, straight shot down to this area, just like you saw from 6,000 down into the uh, into the high 3,000s. So again, you know, be aware of these things. Um, definitely do be aware of these things. So, you know, the 200 simple moving average would be the impetus, uh, would be the signal, the trigger for that move. Um, now, of course, does that mean that this is going to be guaranteed to be the ultimate low? No, I need to see the response. Just like this area over here that we just looked at, the response was not good enough. If the response is not good enough there, then I look to my next area at around 1860, uh, 1869 right over here. And if that, you know, same thing over there, then yes, then I join the the ultra bears at around 1000, uh, which is also the 942 Fibonacci retracement, just saying. Uh, okay, so let's let's now talk about the future. Let's go back to the future, baby. Alrighty, um, each and every one of these dotted trend lines represents a parabolic, uh, so it represents the support trend line of a parabolic mark cycle each and every one in Bitcoin's history, starting with this one in 2010 to 2011 over here, breaks in 2012, and that becomes the highs of your next mark cycle in 2013 and 2014 over here. Then another support trend line is created for that market cycle right over here, right over here in 20, 2011 and 2012, it gets broken in 2015, and that becomes the highs, the governing factor of your 2017, 2018 mark cycle over here on, on 20,000. Then we created another support trend line for this for this next market cycle right here and right here sorry right here and right here in 2015 uh, and 2016 that gets broken on that first major down below 4,000 
leading us below this 200 exponential moving average and does that become our our governing factors you know going forwards well it's been working in the past so <laughs> hopefully it works in the future uh again three times three times makes a trend right now we have two which is not necessarily good enough but we can like start to look at what you know what the governing factor could be you know beginning in 2021 you know right over here and the high of this could be about you know 36,000 is what it purports if we go all the way to 2022 what you know what would it be over there it would be uh about 95,000 and if we go to 2023 if it even lets us it does uh it could be about 200,000 of course does that mean it's going to get to 200,000 no it does not and remember most of the time most of the time it's getting rejected at, the, at those areas and that's what puts in the highs um you do have this one off in in the 2013 2014 area where you actually did get to grind it twice um but yeah you know looking at that it is interesting now again at the end of the year it's actually, you know, the governing factor would 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 prospectively be around uh, what, you know, basically thirteen thousand. I, I mean, I I have a belief that I don't think Bitcoin's going to even get back above probably six thousand before end of year. Um, but I'm not really be I'm not really like married to that belief. What I, I I do think that Bitcoin finds lows before the end of the year. I do I I do believe that Bitcoin finds the lows before the end of the year. But just like over here in 20, uh, 2014, 2015, you can go sideways alongside the lows and grind in that area, um, for you know for quite some time, which is what I think we'll probably do. But we probably will start that slow upwards momentum be like right around the end of the year, something like that. It's probably gonna be a long time, um, but I, I think that Bitcoin finds its lows probably in the next uh, four four to six months, I'd imagine. I, I, that's again being pulled out of my ass. I don't really have too much of a uh, I don't have a uh, have a strong married belief to that. Um, okay, cool. So, what else can we get off of this? Well, you see the you see these uh, solid trend lines here that are declining. Uh, we have we have two right here. We have this first one, which essentially holds in the consolidation before the bull trap of that region, or sorry, of that phase. And then after this one's this one's taken out, price action actually pops back down and bases on it once, and then bases on it twice over here. It never breaks it again. Is my point. So we actually have the same thing in 2018 and 2019 going on over here. We have this first trend line, which holds in the the uh, the consolidation before the bull trap, which was right over here on the run to eight thousand. Remember, the MVT zone was also signaling a bull trap, just like it was in this area for twenty fourteen. Um, and we have actually based off of it once. It also lined up with the two hundred simple average, which I, which I really do like for good confluence. What does that mean going forwards? Well, if we were to walk it down, we could maybe come up with a timing. Again, I don't put too much weight on this, but it is interesting to look at. Could it be that Bitcoin comes all the way down, you know, Bitcoin comes down to that 2300 to 2600 area that we just looked at, where would that line up with? Well, that would line up with literally like <laughs> next week in February, like mid to late February, essentially. May, yeah, may, maybe late, late February as well, like uh, essentially the last two weeks of February. Do I think that's going to happen? I mean, we'd have to start turning down right now. <laughs> before you know before this weekly close i'd imagine um by the same token if it goes lower to that 1800 level uh you know that would that would suggest a time uh, based off this at around early april if we go even lower than that if we go to the 1000 level like the super bears are looking at um then that would be that would suggest around june early early mid to early june so again um i'm not really married to the timings of these sorts of things but i am interested in what they do say as we do have something you know from a historical perspective kind of lining up with that this other descending tri uh, trend line actually does denote when bitcoin begins the very first momentum of its bullish uh, of, uh, of its bullish posturing leading into the bull mark cycle when bitcoin actually breaks this that's when that's the earliest time frame of when your bull mark starts you have it right here uh early october 2015 uh if we were to look at this again this is again we, we now we have to like guess two things we have to guess when it bottoms and then when it turns around but basically you know if it were to bottom somewhere right around here in 2300 then and maybe it turns around over here this would suggest in july perhaps late july early august i'd imagine like of it actually turning around and get and gaining some bullish momentum you know if, it, if it's even lower then it could be october um and if it's uh and if it's all the way in if it goes all the way to 1000 that would be that would suggest you know actually not in 2019 it'd probably be 2020 so again um yeah it can take its time it can take its time again i'm not too you know that that's more of a fun thing to look at rather than like a <laughs> rather than something to like be going off of uh you know gung ho like like technical analysis in a lower time frame that we can do okay cool 
All right, have we talked about enough? Um, do we want to go over alts? I mean, we can go over alts really quickly. Uh, I do want to show some things with XRP. XRP is already really, really coming under pressure here. This is just another lower high as far as XRP is concerned. I mean, this this is bad when the other major alts are not following, or or or, or not, or perhaps not even following, but just already turning down. I mean, we're just creating a massive descending triangle here. <sighs> reject, reject, reject. I'm going to imagine that this one does close below this area. Um, if we go to the two-day, let's see what it looks like. Yeah, two-day doesn't look as bad. Three-day doesn't look as bad as uh, either, but uh, daily looks atrocious. This is awful. This is confirmed as a lower high as far as I'm concerned. We do have follow-through. Um, that's bad. Now, again, until you actually break 28 cents, you don't want to get too damn bearish, although this looks pretty bad. Uh, by the same token, you don't want to get too bullish uh, as nothing's really changed until you can get back above 34 and a half cents. Nothing's changed there in, in months. Um, Let's go over to Stellar. Stellar, bounce, it bounced with the market on Friday. Where does it get rejected at? The next resistance. It just, it not even able to test the, the 21 exponential. Uh, let me put on the 10 simple. I'm curious where he's coming in around. Uh, nothing, you're losing even the 10 simple right now. Again, you're, you, have, you have support around seven cents or so. Second that one breaks, so it's gonna be another flush. Again, this is very, very nasty. Very, very nasty. Um, Okay, what else do we have? Uh, let's go. Let's go look at Mrs. Litecoin. She had the best bounce. She she's acting the best right now. Best volume, characters, best uh, best higher high, but still not able to get above this critical. What is this? Forty-seven and a half buck region. As long as you're below this area, this is just, you know you're still below you're still below the resistance. You're you're still below this kind of critical marker. And and you know this Litecoin is the closest and is the best case for Bitcoin not being, or sorry, for, for Bitcoin putting in slows because Litecoin actually does, you know, is making a higher high. But what are we doing right now? If we get rejected here on Litecoin, on Mrs. Litecoin, what's gonna happen? I mean, this is, what what is this? <laughs> this is a nice little, you know, do you wanna call it rising channel, rising, uh, rising wedge, whatever the fuck you wanna call it, typically a bearishly resolved pattern. Typically a bearishly resolved pattern. Let's see what the weekly looks like. Weekly is just a test of the 21 exponential. Again, look at the volume pictures on the weekly. Nothing. Fucking nothing. I mean, it, just looking at this, it, <laughs> not good. Not good. Again, Litecoin is the closest to making me change my mind, though. If Litecoin could get above uh, 47 and a half bucks, close a nice, thick, girthy daily dildo above there, this thing can actually run quite a bit to about $69, which is a great number. So I'm actually a Litecoin fan. Um, but yeah, right, right here is what I'd be looking towards. Okay. Uh, let's go look at, uh, Mr. Buterall, Mr. Buterall. How you doing, Mr. Buterall? Uh, beautiful reaction as well. But again, doji dildo, a little bit of follow through to the downside. Again, needs to hold 116 and a half. As long as you're above 116 and a half, I do just interpret this as, as, as a retest of former, uh, former resistance now turn support. But, 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 but <laughs> as you can see, Looking a little bit om 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 ominous here. Uh, hitting the 0.5 and turning right back down. I want to see what the what the 618 does, if and when it does get there. And I do believe that it will get there, just like Bitcoin. I, Bitcoin might have already got there and I just missed it, um, which would be very, very sad. But if the, if the 618 holds, then yeah, then we'll probably get a test, you know, probably into the 146 range. If Bitcoin goes to 4,000 again, that's where that's where Buterol is likely to go as well. So again, keep that in mind. Um, but as far as, uh, you know, as far as the weekly is going, weekly is a bullish engulfing. Uh, is it? Yeah, it, yeah, it is a bullish engulfing, but still being held by the 10 simple. Same thing with Bitcoin. Bitcoin, bullish engulfing, or, or on most exchanges, a bullish engulfing, still being held by the 10 simple at 36.14. Uh, now, of course, there's a lot of hours between now and, and 7 p.m. at Eastern Standard Time before the end of the day, but uh, I'd imagine that this is... Uh, <laughs> you know, keep this in mind, keep this, keep these things in mind. Now, again, I'm going to wrap it up now and, uh, and make it very simple on the lower time frames. Uh, Bitcoin, the, as long as this support holds right here, 35, 30, I do have a short term bias as looking, you know, looking for a bounce, probably playing a scalp bounce in this range. Um, you know, if, 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 if it only gets down to 35, uh, 35, 50, that actually be pretty, pretty good sign. Um, but for the most part, major resistance still here, 3,700, which would be the top side of this ascending trend line that we've been living under. If Bitcoin does take out that area, likely going to have a quick move to 4,000. By the same token, as long as we're within this area, I do hold the overall thought process that this is a bearish consolidation likely, likely to be resolved to the downside. 
if we do bounce off 3530, uh, I still wouldn't be holding it for too long. You know, I'd be looking to get rid of it on any sort of a move back into the 36, uh, 3700 range, anything like that. So again, that's how I'm going to be looking at this uh, 3300, the critical area to be hold, uh, to, to be held in, to be holding. <laughs> as long as Bitcoin's above 3300, I am, you know, it's it's hard it's hard to be like super bearish looking for new lows. So again, that's going to do it for today, guys. I hope this one finds you well. It is a weekend, so I won't be doing a live stream later. I'm um, going to be enjoying my own day. Going to go have a shit ton of food because I'm very very hungry and really, really, really looking forward to that. Again, want to thank you for viewing. Want to say that it's an absolute pleasure to be speaking with you and I hope that your day is going to absolutely swell. Hopefully a little bit less wet than what it looks like outside in uh, in good old Finland right now. But, uh, but again, wishing you well over here and I'll see you guys soon. Take care.